All right. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Lure Lab, a part of the Serious Angler Network. This is episode 102. And as always, I am your host, the captain, Andrew Fall. And uh, for those who are new here to the Lure Lab, you know, there's something you should know about this podcast here. We're not your just traditional fish chat and talk. We're here to break down the juice, right? To help you catch more bass, put them in the boat on the bank or in the kayak, whatever your favorite way to fish is. We're just bringing information on every bait and every technique on the market to help you catch more bass. And anything that we talk about here today, that will be linked down below in the description. There's also a code down there. Take you over to Omnia and you can save up to 10% or more if you become a premium pro member on your order. So make sure you hit the description down below on everything that we talk about today and head over to Omnia and add them to your cart. But boy, we have an awesome episode for you here today. I got my good friend Sakai coming on. You know, we talked about free rig fishing a couple months ago and it was a big hit here on <clears throat> on the podcast. So wanted to bring them back on here. We're going to talk about the D crack bellow stick. And I apologize. I lost my voice a couple days ago and it's slowly coming back. So Hope you enjoy this episode, and let's get Sakai on. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm sorry good. about your voice. <laughs> oh, you know, it's just running around on the big lake when it's 30 degrees out. It's going to happen. But anyways, I do want to talk about something before we get into the episode, right? How big was that bass you caught on my boat yesterday before we recorded uh... this? I mean, I thought we thought at first like a seven pounder over yeah. seven, but just in case we did like just the weight again, and unfortunately six ninety four. Oh my god! I think gosh. It, maybe that's my PB smallmouth. Uh, we're just gonna say it's your PB because I like breaking PBs on my boat, so yeah. it's something we do just about weekly at this point. I feel like so it's yeah. uh it was a pleasure to fish with you. It, I'm sad that we only got to do it one time this year. Hopefully one or two more times before the season's up. But before we ramble on and I lose my voice, okay. let's chat about the Gee Crack Bellows. Stick, yeah. Right. And okay. why should someone add this bait to their arsenal? Yeah. Um, I I think it's the this right now the bass fishing market i i don't for my my opinion i don't i don't see a lot of good lingworm to me and not so many people throwing I, I my opinion so and then like i mean i just find out like a really good lingworm um that's a barrel stick you know that's that's uh yeah i'm always signed on because i love ringworm you know and why why should a stick bait be ringed like the bellow stick? What does the ringed part of the body do? Well, he, here the thing like you can make a little fat profile, right? But is a uh, um basically the main core part is like a skinny. So it, if you have like a fat worm, it's really hard to, you know, hook set. Like you need an extra extra wide gap. But it's like it, it, you using like a general EWG uh, hook ratio is pretty good, but it's also like a big profile. And then ring make more like a flexibility, and then yeah, attract the fish. That's my opinion. I like. Does it, it like add extra bubbles to the water and etc.? Yes, also yeah, and also catches the water, and then like a more like a natural, realistic movement, you know. Perfect. So, so yeah. as a lot of people know, and those who do not know, Gee Crack recently introduced the floating elastomer plastic, right? So right. what what is the biggest difference between the OG or the original? in the floating elastomer products and maybe even is there different sizes that are offered right um actually elastomer is like a floating and then like 
if you're using a fr uh like free rig or like I like to use like a wobble head thing, so mm -hmm. you touch the bottom and then the elastomer thing is floating, you know, standing up, and I move naturally, you know, and versus this original one. They have like soft material. It's like a special uh, amino acid uh, salt in there, and which make a flavor and smells. And so, like you, you drop the worm, and then naturally fall on the ground. So, like you can pick either, you know, uh, style. And then also the elastomer. Good thing is like you know. It's tough. It's durable. And you can yeah. use a lot of time, you know. So, uh, but I, I think it, it's both has, you know, I mean, original one is uh, kind of, you know, if you catch few few bass and then the broke broke off, but it, it has a lot of value, you know. Is a, uh, I sometimes use a no sinker, you know. But uh, elastomer is like, unfortunately, it's a floating. Yeah. So that's why, I don't know, pick and choose a you know, situation. Both are good, you know, yeah. I like. And I think we're going to get into this here in a little bit, your rigging yeah. options, right? Like that's one of the things we want to talk about. And when we get into how to rig the bellow stick, kind mm -hmm. of talk about where you would use the original or the elastomer one, if you don't mind, when we get to that point. So we're not quite there yet, but I want to know okay. <laughs> Sakai. Yeah. You're going out fishing, you're a co-angler in an event, right? And you have yeah. to throw the bellow stick. What is your predominant size option that you choose first? Yeah. And then what maybe is your second favorite size? And then if you have colors, what is your favorite top two colors to throw okay um so my favorite one is of course 5.8 um this is my you know like a standard i mean of course is 4.8 is gonna be a uh basic people's um you know kind of standard but i like a little big worm to find out a big fish you know like yep. Especially the central or down the south. I mean, the large mouths love like you know big worms, and then I mean, just in case they have eight inches. But uh, I started using a five point eight, and then see what's going on. They're biting or not, and then if they're tough, I mean, I'm just you know size down four point eight. Yeah. Um. Yeah, e even I fish the north, um, like Central Lawrence River. Um, I just use five point eight, and then four point eight, and that those are my favorite two size. But they they still they also have a smaller version too, like three point eight, two point eight. Uh, basically, people using a drop shot, you know, net or eight sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not using that much those small things <laughs> yeah i know you're not a drop shotter or a nedrick guy so <laughs> it, it's a shame <laughs> i don't know i would say that but uh yeah i'm not good at it i'm not uh professional those you know <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly surprised by that i'm just yeah. kidding every time we <laughs> fish together you just come with a bunch of bait casters and i i know what's happening so it's awesome yeah so uh, what would be like your top three colors that you would choose of the the bow yeah, stick? Um, I, I like actually, is it is it all over the U.S. or no sort of specific spot or like St. No, just, or, just if you had um, to choose three colors, what three colors oh. would you recommend to put in a tackle box? Yeah, uh, I like first green pumpkin i'm sorry i'm a boring guy <laughs> but um second probably electric shad uh they're like gray and then like a pow white two-tone color mm -hmm. it's more like a imitated those like uh shiners or like a small minnows mm -hmm. you know uh and third is actually watermelon uh watermelon is kind of perfect everywhere like you know near grass or like 
even I don't know why. Like I just this is secret though. But um, a Saint Lawrence lever, they I don't know. They don't have any grass around there. But it's like hard rock bottom. They love watermelon. I don't know why they they bite me. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. I wonder if it's just the way the watermelon shows up on the bottom, right? Like maybe the right. goat down on the bottom get that clearish opaque white color maybe based on all the salt in that uh, saf you know yeah formula course, maybe it yeah. turns smell a little pale in the bottom of course it smells what makes them bite we know right. that so all right now we talked about the worm a little bit let's talk about sakai's top three rigging options so oh we're going to go one, two, three. three. It doesn't matter where you start. Okay. I want to know what your rigging option number one is. Yeah. What size mm -hmm. bellow stick, mm -hmm. original or SAF, or when you would use both, and mm -hmm. your total setup, rod, reel, and line. Okay. Um, Number three, I mean, <laughs> I like three, Carolina I like rig. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm usually use um medium heavy, uh seven foot four inch uh long rod with uh I use the uh, free rig sink. You use a long rod? Yeah. I didn't know Carolina. you had. I I didn't know you had a rod over seven foot in your arsenal. So this is oh yes. Great. I mean, <laughs> I should have it. Carolina man, like I know I I don't use the Carolina for six six, you know. I love short rod, but <laughs> I mean, it, it's like yeah. I'm sorry, like top three is a little boring setup, like you know, no. or a medium heavy. It, Carolina and, rig is like a lost art, right? Like more people probably should have it in their arsenal, and they don't because they're so caught up in. Mm -hmm. um, just all the technology that's happening and mm -hmm. sometimes they're afraid to just dig and dive around with the Carolina rig, the old ball and chain. We all got one. Well, I mean, it still work. I mean, I, I made a lot of money on that, you know, yeah. <laughs> even the St. Lawrence river or like, you know, down to South some Laban or, you know, everywhere it work and then grass or a hard bottom. Yeah. Still, people doing that though. I mean, central, you know, south people. So perfect. Well, let's yeah. talk about how you. Um, so maybe even you can dive into the hook, right? Like your entire yeah. setup: rod, yeah. um, reel, line, hook, weights. Yeah. Um, I'm all. Of course, I'm always using a Zerian ten for the high gear. Um, yeah, everything I'm using: a chatter baiting, jerk baiting, top water, everything. Like it's just I am based on 10 gear everything except the deep crankbait you know and um also the line it i'm using depends on the area though but a 16 to 20 pound floral carbon all floral and um uh, put the um depends on the how deep but it's like basically five eighths or three quarter i love the heavy sinker um uh, even using not carolina sinker I'm using a free rig sinker because a free rig sinker always like, you know, anti snack, you know? Mm -hmm. And also I put on the swivel after the free rig sinker. And then maybe the, I'm not really long reader guy. Uh, I don't know how much inch, but I'm not really long. <laughs> and then I put on like, mm, recently I'm using a 3.0 um ewz uh hook with a 5.8 normal um you know not a rastamar uh bellow stick and then yeah i'm just dragging or twitching sometimes and then make a bite love so, that yeah. perfect all right what is option number two for number <laughs> two is the wobble hat i don't know uh, people using the nose people or not like a football jig and then like some offset hook on it you know wobble head yeah. so this is like uh i use like central and the south um you know like a man-made lake to you know 
research on the like a deep or shallow water um, bottom. Um, um, the wobble head size is a half ounce and uh, two o hook, and then also, yep, five point eight uh, normal, like uh, not elastomer bell stick, and then the taco is six eight. Medium heavy. Here come the short rods. Yeah, short rod. And then 16 pound fluorocarbon. And uh, also Zirian 10 with um, KTF spool. Uh, it's the custom spool. I need a long cast. That's why yeah. I, yeah, I've just customized those reels and, you know, make a long distance cast. Even short short length rod you know <laughs> yeah it's perfect. And then why why i'm using uh the short rod because those like a uh, simple wobble head thing um i i want to more shaking or like i want to feel more more bottom so that's why the short rod is like more lighter sensitive and then easy to shake or twitching you know yeah, That's why it, it doesn't move the bait nearly as far with the short rod. Right, right. So that's uh yeah, my setup. And people people would think it is uh you if you want a long distance cast, I mean you need a long rod. And also if you are <laughs> hook up uh like a long distance, you need a long rod, but it's I have high gear and also I got the custom spool. That's a key. Custom spool make a long cast. So that's why I, I don't really worry about over seven foot or not. I need Unless a it's a Carolina head. rig. Yeah. Car only Carolina rig need a more stroke because you know yeah. those distance, you know, like yep. the uh, uh, sinker and a lure distance, you know, and also... Yep. Your your you know worm and sinker is a far away. You have to cast like a beginner cast, and then if you you know short rod is struggle to cast those things. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're gonna fit, wrap it up with Sakai's rigging option number. Sure, one. I'm sorry, to talk too much. About, no, um, you're fine, my friend. Number one is I'm sorry, I'm boring again. But free rig. That's, There's nothing boring about a free rig. Yeah. I mean, uh, I would say um, for me, perfect for a free rig. I think if you want to win the tournament, maybe start 4.8. I said, I said is my stand is 5.8, but is my opinion, the free rig um 4.8 is the perfect combination for my opinion i mean of course 5.8 is really good but depends on the free rig is like all about the, how heavy your sinker you're using and then like a tackle setup is different too like if i use a 316 i'm doing a big finesse um you know like uh small profile reel and a short rod and then like shaking all the time and, you know, show distance, pitching, casting and, you know, more accuracy cast I need. And then if I use like a heavy 5.8, uh, 5 eighths or three quarter like ounce um, sinker, I might use in like, again, like six, eight medium heavy um, with zero and 10, you know. Bait finesse is a real different. Is I'm using the Steez Air, uh, different bait finesse reel. Um, yeah, that's how I rotate it, and then use my confidence baits on the free rig. That's all about it. And the line size is all, all eight to like twenty. Like it's it depends just sixteen. On it's yeah. just sixteen. <laughs> 16 okay yeah gotcha 16 because yeah zebra now, do you have um eat my do you have a favorite time. fluorocarbon that you like to use yeah um i used to be use uh torre x red but he's 
it's the best option I got a long time ago, but it's like, it's so hard to get the product in the States. And then I was just looking for a long time, which fluorocarbon company is good. And I've got to figure out uh, Daiwa Samurai fluorocarbon. Uh, this is economically really good. And also it's, it's a really good line. I mean, if you fish cover, fan. yeah, I mean, get get sn- snagged or like a robbing everywhere, like, you know, metal wires or brush piles or boat dock or frame or whatever. I mean, I, I didn't have any terrible, like, broken off problem, you know. So Samurai Fro- Frodo is all my choice right now. Uh, they have a big spool and then, you know, is very friendly for tournament angler. Right. They have so much variety too. Like I use a spinning caster, seven pound. It's like, they always like, you know, four, six, eight, 10, 12, something like that. Right. But they have metal, you know, like, oh, six pound is a little light, but eight is too heavy. And then I need a seven and a perfect like that, you know, yeah. like that. So I like that. Uh, some rye floral so much <laughs> yeah, yeah it's good stuff now i want to wrap it up here real quick but i do yep. have two more questions for you right sure so all the right first one is what is your most memorable or favorite fish catch throwing the bellow stick oh my gosh i never forget uh two says back 2021 at the santa lawrence river um MLF Toyota series, uh, still the event opened the lake. And then the third day, I was just uh, tied for leader, the weight. And then I drove Chris Johnston. <laughs> and then me and him go right over, over the um, Lake Ontario. And then I throw all day 5.8. <laughs> A barrel stick all day and i it i just got five exact bite and then i won the tournament and then all of them big fish yeah once in a two hour i get by and then all of them are big Dang. that's my memorable moment i was crushing them <laughs> you're crushing them every two yeah. hours but they're giants so it doesn't right. matter right you got so, your yeah. limit i made a six pound gap for our first and second place six pound oh my yeah. goodness that's, that's awesome crazy. yeah that's fantastic yeah and then the final question i have for you yes, before sir. i let you run here is if you had any advice at all for those who are tuning in that are afraid of like the price point mm-hmm. of the bellow stick and maybe like they're afraid to fish it, like a way to rig it, etc. Like, why should people not be afraid to spend the dollar amount? And two, what is the easiest, mm-hmm. quickest way for our viewership to learn how to throw it to catch more bass? Um, I I think like just the uh, um, high price lure is kind of helping the tournament angerous you know why because not so many like amateur people using it or like a lot of people using you know mm-hmm. but uh, we know the good stuff but it's a pricey so that mean is you're the only using you know that's why fish still biting and then yeah. absolutely this product is amazing so that's it kind of high price is the negativity a lot of people think, but it's like if that's the only one, a, a little different than other brand or lures. I mean, maybe you should try, and then like not so many people using that's an advantage, you know. People like a fish never get used to, and then the velo stick especially is not so many good rib worm. I mean on the market i believe you know i know that few company they have but as not as a good as like a you know bell stick so that's why 
uh, it, if you really want to win the tournament or, you know, just the interest these products, please use it. And then, like, maybe you like it, maybe you're not. But it definitely, uh, this expensive product is an advantage for you because no one using it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No, that's perfect. And then yeah. what is, like, one advice you'd give to our viewership to help them catch their first bass on a bellow stick or catch more bass? Uh, just keep throwing. <laughs> Simple. Free rig. Trust me. Definitely. <laughs> keep throwing free rig. Keep throwing no, free rig. Trust me. Yeah. Trust yeah. Sakai. Trust me. Trust. Throw the free rig. <laughs> yeah. You addict to it, right? right yeah, now. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. I, throw, I throw it on like a 7 3 medium heavy 20 pound <laughs> test, like five eighth ounce, three quarter ounce weight, and just <laughs> give them the beads. Boat flip yeah. everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so. uh, it's funny. Like back to uh, 2016 when I started using it, and then like, well, 2018, I just introduced the major tournament because I won the Lake Erie tournament. And yeah. I just on the stage, I said, it's like, oh, I use the free rig. And then like people are like, what? Like, what is that? <laughs> like, no one know. No one even yeah. time. And then now it's like just a lot of people know, you know. I'm surprised this getting popular. Like, I mean, I think it's a Asian technique. No, no secret anymore here. A lot of people know more than me, JDM, or actually Free Rig from Korea. But it's like, yeah, this secret is gone. We don't we don't have an advantage anymore. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you still have stuff behind the closed door that you're not talking about. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. exactly my point. <laughs> I, I mean, someday, though, I mean, like, if you have a chance, I really want to introduce BFS, too. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, I made a lot of money for that, you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely have to have a BFS episode here in the near future. Someday, Sakai. Please. So, yeah, absolutely. No, I appreciate you coming on today, buddy. And uh, hopefully yeah. we can get out again here before everything freezes up. Mm -hmm. So we'll chat soon. I'm going to let you go now. And thank, thank you, you again for coming on anytime. We'll yeah. chat soon. Have a good one. You Thank too. you for six pounder. I mean, yeah. seven oh seven. <laughs> almost seven. Yes. Yeah, almost, almost seven. seven. All right, almost seven. All right. <laughs> see you, see you. All right buddy. You Ciao. Know, talk, talk to you soon. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode here on the Lure Lab. If you're listening on YouTube and you're new here, please smash that subscribe button. We greatly appreciate all the support. Leave a comment down below if you've ever used any of these rigging options or if you've actually just used the Geek Crack bellow stick it's an awesome little bait so you don't sleep on it if you're tuned in on your favorite podcast platform and it allows you to leave a review please do so it allows the lure lab to be seen by more people who love bass fishing and want to get better at throwing individual techniques to catch more bass and put them in the boat kayak or on the bank so until next week we will see you then